Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and in this video we're going to introduce elementary matrices and also the inverse algorithm. So an algorithm to calculate the inverse of a matrix. So we'll start off by introducing elementary matrices. Row operations can be thought of as multiplication by special matrices called elementary matrices. And to form these elementary matrices, all we need to do is the desired row operation to the identity matrix. So let's look at a little example. If I have the matrix A, B, C, D, just a little two by two matrix. One example of a row operation might be to multiply the first row by some number, like two. Now what I can do to get that same effect of that row operation is multiply this matrix on the left by an elementary matrix. Now, how do I find the right elementary matrix to do a multiplication of row one by two? I just start with identity, there's identity, and do the row, desired row operation on identity. So if I want to multiply row one by two, I would end up with this matrix. Now if I multiply these two matrices together, I get exactly 2a, 2b, c, and d. And so I see that multiplication by this elementary matrix is just doing that row operation. So that's what an elementary matrix is. Now, how are we going to use them? Well, since row reducing is a series of row operations, then to row reduce a matrix, I could just multiply it by a series of elementary matrices. So for instance, if I take some matrix A, and I want to row reduce this matrix, maybe the first operation is multiplying the first row by 3. I don't know. Whatever that row operation is, there is some elementary matrix, I'm going to call it the first one E1, where multiplying A by E1 will do the row operation. And then I might have some second row operation, and some third row operation that I'm doing to these matrices. And eventually I'll get down to my row reduced echelon form after doing a series of these row operations. Now, what does this have to do with inverse matrices? Well, let's look at this. If A is invertible, then let's look at the matrix equation AX equals B. It turns out that we can say that this thing has one and only one solution. And why is that? Well, if A is invertible, then there's an inverse matrix, and I could multiply both sides of this equation by that inverse matrix, and then because this is just identity, I could simplify this to A inverse times B. But A inverse is a unique matrix, so I will get a unique result here. So this shows me there is a solution, if I can find A inverse, and that the solution is exactly that vector. So, if A is invertible, we know there's one and only one solution. But if that's true, and I take this square matrix A and I row reduce it, it's going to row reduce to a special form. It's going to row reduce to identity. Because remember, if this matrix has only one and only one solution, it must be one to one and onto, and therefore must have a pivot position every row and in every column. And this is a square matrix, so it must row reduce all the way down to identity. Well, if this is true, then if I just multiply these elementary row operations by themselves to get some matrix, this matrix would have to be the inverse, because that matrix times A is giving me to identity. And so that's the process that we're looking at here, how those elementary matrices are related to the inverse matrix. So how do I actually find this? What's a nice process that would allow me to gather up these elementary row operations? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write A, and I'm going to create a bigger matrix that has A on one side, and I'm going to augment that matrix with the identity matrix. And then I'm just going to do these row operations. Once again, I can think of these row operations as multiplication by, you know, for instance, the matrix E1. But if I take E1 times this larger matrix, the effect, because multiplying this this matrix by E1 is kind of like taking the first column, multiplying it by E1, then the second one, and so on and so forth. Then when I talk about these two parts of the larger matrix, it will end up looking like this. That's the effect of multiplying my new augmented matrix by E1. 
But on the right-hand side, this is just E1 times identity, which is just E1. And now, if I continue to do my row operations, it will just look like this. And eventually, this right-hand side will end up to be A inverse. So when I augment with the identity, it's just something there that's going to gather up these row operations. OK, now let's talk about all this stuff one more time. But now we'll look at it in Mathematica. So here I have an example of a specific matrix, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 1. And I want to row reduce this matrix. So I need to do a row operation. Well, one way I can do a row operation is just by multiplication by some special elementary matrix. So I'm going to put my parentheses there just to kind of mark my matrix. Then I'll hit Control, comma, Control, Enter to get the right size here. And right now I'm just going to put an identity. And then I'm actually going to copy this matrix so I can, oops, put an identity. And then I'm going to copy this identity matrix, Control C, so I can adjust it later. OK, so of course, if I multiply this product, I'll just get this matrix on the right side. But what I want to do is row reduce that matrix. So the first step in a row reduction might be to multiply the first row by negative 1. Well, I'm going to do that to my matrix over here. And now this is an elementary matrix that should do that row operation for me. And sure enough, it has. Now the next step in row reduction of this matrix would be to take row 2 and subtract 2 times R1. So I'm going to paste in my identity. And I'm going to do that row operation on this matrix. Row 2 minus 2 times row 1 would look like this. So this is the elementary matrix that should do that row operation. And I'm making progress here. Now I need to do the next row operation. The next row operation looks like maybe multiplying row 2 by negative 1. Well, that would be the right elementary matrix. And I'm getting there. I think I need one more step here. One more row operation. Well, if I take row 2, I'm sorry, row 1 minus row 2, row 1 minus row 2, it would give me this elementary matrix. And sure enough, there I have row reduced to identity. OK, so this group of matrices all the way from here to here are just those elementary matrices that I needed to use to take this matrix A and row reduce it to identity. But once again, I could take all these matrices, control copy, control paste, and just multiply them by themselves. And the result will be this matrix. So all this big expression is saying is this matrix times this matrix, control copy, dot, control paste, get me to identity. That tells me that this is that inverse matrix that I was looking for. So once again, I can see the product of all these elementary matrices is really just the inverse. Now, what's the shortcut to? to calculating those if I'm not working in Mathematica and, and I'm able to copy and paste everything around? Well, if I start with my original A and I just made it bigger, if I augmented with identity, and if I perform these same row operations to this new larger augmented matrix, it's going to do those row operations to the whole matrix, not just A, but it's also going to do those row operations to identity. And the identity piece is going to gather up all of those row operations. So now, when I look at this product, I can see that if I take this augmented matrix, where A is on the first on the left side and identity is on the right, and I do my row operations, eventually I get a new matrix with identity on the left and the inverse matrix on the right. So I can see here, this little piece right here is exactly my inverse matrix. OK, and the last little comment I'll make is that you see this weird command at the top, preprint equals matrix form? You can pretty much just ignore that. Um, that's just a little um, preprocessing command here that's going to have all my outputs when I do these matrix multiplications give me that nice form instead of the um, lists of lists form. All right, so now let's do a hand example. So how do we calculate the inverse of A? If A is n by n and it's invertible, then we create a new matrix, A augmented with identity. And this thing should reduce, row reduce, to identity augmented with the inverse. So let's look at an example. We're going to let A equal this matrix, 2, 4, 1, 3. To find the inverse, I'm going to take that matrix, 
augment it with the identity matrix and do some row operations. My first row operation is going to take one half of row one. I'll be left with one, two, one half, zero, and the second row will stay the same. My next row operation is going to take R2 minus R1. And remember, you can always pause this video if this process is going too fast. Row 1 will stay the same. And I'm going to take R2 minus R1. I should get a 0 here. 3 minus 2 is 1. 0 minus 1 half is negative 1 half. And 1 minus 0 is 1. What's my next step? Well, my next step should be taking R1. Specifically, I'm looking at trying to eliminate this position right here and subtract 2 times R2. In this case, my R2 is going to stay the same. And I have 1 minus 2 times 0. 2 minus 2 times 1, 0 like I wanted. 1 half, and I get 1 half minus 2 times negative 1 half. I'll just do a little side work here. So this should be 1 half plus 1, or 3 halves. And my last thing would be 0 minus 2 times 1, so negative 2. OK. So I've taken this matrix A augmented with I, and I've now finished my row reduction. And I see this is I, which tells me this piece over here must be the inverse matrix. And of course, we can always test that by taking 2, 4, 1, 3, the matrix A, times this result that we got. And if we do that multiplication, we're going to get 3 halves times 2 is 3, plus 4 times a negative 1 half. That's negative 2. So we have 3 minus 2. And then we have 3 halves minus 3 halves here. And then the next column over will give us negative 4 plus 4 and negative 2 plus 3. This, of course, simplifies to 1, 0, 0, 1 identity. So we can confirm that, yes, this is the inverse matrix. So the important thing is this algorithm does not just work for 2 by 2s. We could easily do it with 3 by 3s, 4 by 4s, so on and so forth. We just create that new matrix with A on the left, augment it with identity, and do the row reduction. If we do that row reduction and we don't get identity on the left-hand side, that matrix was not invertible to start with. All right, so that concludes this video on elementary matrices and the inverse algorithm. Thank you.